Here now, the author of Public on Substack, Michael Schellenberger, who was part of this hit piece in the New York Times. There was a tweet from Toby Rogers that, who kind of summed it up. The most important free speech case in American history will be heard by SCOTUS. So today, that was yesterday, the New York Times put out a front page above the fold editorial disguises news article about how free speech is Trumpian and the First Amendment must be abolished. Fudge, not what he said, the New York Times. Michael, there was a photo of you. So you're Trumpian. You, I, that you're just being manipulated um, as part of this suppression of speech is the way it made it sound and just what say you well yeah i mean i think you can see uh, how threatened some of the advocates of government censorship are that they have to basically lie about my friend matt taibbi and me we're both independents neither of us are republican or democrat neither of us voted for trump uh, either time and so i think what you're seeing here is an effort to basically advocate really by, you know, by journalists advocating for the censorship of other journalists. I mean, that's what the, the whole tenor of that article was. I think what you saw there in the courts today was equally disturbing, where we saw Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson talking about how the government needed to restrict free speech rights. You know, it seemed to be lost on her and many of the other justices that we have a good solution to when people are spreading lies and misinformation is to do what I'm doing right now, which is to correct the record and to talk back to the misinformation and lies rather than, for example, for me to demand censorship of the New York Times. I think people have, we got to get back to basics here and remember that we, the part of the reason that we live in such a great country is precisely because of the First Amendment, which protects our ability to speak our minds without regard for what the government wants. I think that's a really good point because Ketanji Brown Jackson was talking about the government and the need for them to um, have harmful information taken down. Well, to your point, we should have more speech. So you have the right yeah. information get out there if it's wrong. But what's troubling here is that um, the harmful information was information that was just inconvenient for Democrats. It was the fact that right. you had um, vaccines that didn't work and you had really good doctors that were pushing back on the vaccines. You had um, the, the Hunter Biden laptop, which was real, that they, they uh, curtailed that speech because it was allegedly Russian disinformation. My concern with the case, I mean, this, that, that we have this divide in the court is concerning, and I want to get your take on it, because, one, you have topical information that... Um, that that uh, the judges think should be taken down, but also the censorship of individuals, taking down individuals and their right to free speech. All of these seem to be incredibly troubling that the, the court is grappling with this. Well, yeah, and also I'd point out that, you know, the New York Times just recently acknowledged how harmful the school lockdowns in particular were on kids. Well, guess who they were censoring? They censored Dr. Jay Bhattacharya, one of the world's greatest epidemiologists of Stanford University. They censored Martin Kildorf of Harvard University. Why? Because they were warning precisely that the lockdowns would negatively impact children. So they kept coming up with these fake examples rather than dealing with the actual examples of censorship. I'll give you another one. Katanji Brown Jackson said something about how, well, what if there were videos online of people jumping out of windows and, and, and then kids were inspired to jump out of windows. Well, it's very ironic because I happen to be a fan of parkour, which is the sport of people jumping off of buildings and jumping off of windows. And somehow we don't have an epidemic of people jumping out of w windows and buildings uh, to their deaths so, simply because there's videos of people doing it safely online. So we're getting into really ridiculous territory here where they didn't seem to want to confront the reality that not just was there specific forms of censorship, including of what Facebook itself called often true information about vaccine side effects, but there was a mass censorship effort led by a former CIA fellow at Stanford University. That is exactly the kind of censorship that our founding fathers feared. And in the digital age, it means that they were able to do it in ways that affected millions of people. And that we would have never known about it. Like, we not right. only that, that we would never have known about it, or those who did know about it would be censored and not able to communicate fact and truth with the rest of America. And if all that wasn't enough to convince you of the dangers of big tech and of censorship, there's a new study claiming that Google has interfered with elections a staggering 41 times in the past 16 years. This report states that Google uses its, quote, great strength, resources, and reach to advance its leftist values. And Google can deplatform you. 
Michael, if it so sees fit, say on YouTube, for example, if they decide, and I, I have read many stories about this, it, they decide they don't like what you're saying, you're gone. Because they can, no more ads, you're donezo. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I mean, I think it's important to remember that the former editor of Psychology Today, Robert Epstein, proved in a peer-reviewed scientific journal article that Google had a bias uh, towards Democrats and against Republicans. He proved that in, in this journal article. And more than that, you can see now we have a huge unfolding scandal around the mistreatment of children with gender dysphoria. But the, YouTube is censoring information about it. Google is censoring that information that parents need to have to keep their kids safe. So this is not an abstract thing. We now have multiple examples of where Google and YouTube are interfering in elections and interfering in the ability of parents to properly protect their children, whether that be from school lockdown, or from potentially dangerous vaccines or from the pseudoscience known as gender medicine. You know, truth dies in darkness, and uh, we appreciate your work with Twitter Files, making sure all Americans understand uh, what our government was doing with Facebook and Twitter and others. Um, and, you know, we have this conversation about what we all know Google has been doing as a left-wing company and the impact and influence they want to have in elections. Michael Schellenberger, do you want to go one more time? No, no, no. All right. I, I have to shut up sometimes, Michael. <laughs> you are always welcome here. Thank Thanks you, Thanks so much. It's my pleasure. We appreciate it.